Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Blender 3D modeling tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be giving you an introduction to the user interface within Blender, getting you a little bit more familiar with the software package so that you can follow along with ease as you go through this series. So having said that, we are going to be breaking down the user interface in the into the different components such as the viewport, toolbar, timeline, scene outliner, properties panel and your info panel. Now these are probably not going to make any sense to you just yet, um, but they will as we go through this video. What we're also going to be doing in today's video is showing you how to customize your interface so you can make things bigger, smaller, wider, thinner and change between the different user interface layout modes. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into the video. So first things first, the main component of the Blender software package is going to be your viewport. Your viewport is the big window in the center. This is going to allow you to see what you're working on. It's going to give you your view into the world. Now you guys should be pretty familiar with this viewport at this point and be able to navigate and fly around it. If you want, I definitely advise you go ahead and check out my previous video on that. Moving on from the viewport, you have got your toolbar on the left hand side. Your toolbar is going to have all of your different functions for manipulating and creating objects. So for example, in my toolbar on the left hand side, in the tools tab on the left here, you can see I've got some functions for translate, rotate, scale, mirror, and these are all going to apply to the selected object in my viewport. What I can also do is go into some of the other different panels that we've got within the toolbar, such as the create panel or the create tab rather, and from here I can use this as a tool to create something else. So for example I can make another cube and then from there I can bring it out into my viewport. Now what I'm not going to be doing is going into too much detail about the toolbar and all of these different functions within each of the different tabs as we will be covering these as we go through the series. So for now, feel free to have a little look around but the main thing is you guys are going to know where to find the toolbar and the type of function that is going to be contained within that. So moving on from the toolbar, in the top right hand corner we have got our scene outliner. Our scene outliner is pretty straightforward and pretty self-explanatory. The scene outliner is going to outline and give you a list of all of the objects within your scene. So for example, you can see within my scene I've got a camera, a cube and a lamp and I can easily select these just by clicking on the different icons here. There's a little bit more you can do with the scene outliner such as turn on visibility, parent items to each other and all of that good stuff but that is going to be something that once again you'll be learning as you progress onto the series but the main thing you need to know about the scene outliner is that it's going to allow you to list all of the items or objects rather and make very easy selections. Moving on from here, just below the scene outliner we have got our properties panel. Now the properties panel is going to give you the details for whatever it is that you're going to be working on. Now by default it's currently set to show you the render presets. Now the properties which are being displayed are going to change depending on what you're working on and you're going to see that come to life as you go on throughout the series as we start working on different objects and we start sort of fine tuning some of the details on those objects. You're all going to be editing this on the right hand side within this properties panel. I'm not going to go into too much detail as the property panel is pretty straightforward and like I said everything's going to change depending on what you're working on so what we have there now is not necessarily going to be what we're going to be working on you know first of all. So we're just going to move on from there. So next up we have got our timeline which is at the bottom. Your timeline is used for animation and you can see quite clearly here we've got a grid and this grid is going to allow the animator or yourself to add keyframes 
And with these keyframes, we're going to be form uh, forming an animation. Now, I'm not going to be teaching you how to make those animations in this video. That is going to be something of its own. But what you do need to know is that when you're making animations, everything is going to be done at the timeline in the bottom here. Moving on to the last panel that I wanted to show you, that is the info panel, which is at the top right hand corner. And you can see with this, what it's going to do is simply just show you some scene information. So when I say scene information, we're talking about vertices, faces, tries, objects, lamps, memory, and the current selection. I'm not going to go into too much detail about what each of these are. So you've got your vertices, faces, and tries, the number of objects in your scene, the number of light sources in your scenes, and then the amount of memory that your scene is taking up. Faces and tries and vertices, that is something that you're going to learn about as you go through the series. But what I will do for now is give you a quick rough overview. Vertices are essentially like the little corner points. And then you've got your faces, which are going to be sort of quads usually. And they are going to be faces, exactly as it says. And then a try is a triangle which is basically just splitting that face into two. So typically your tries is going to be twice as high as your faces. The reason why they give you the two values is some people ask for their models to have a specific face count or a specific try count. By having both values for your scene here, you are able to give them whatever they need, no matter what. So, Hopefully you guys should be a little bit more familiar with the interface now and what I do want to go on and show you before we end the video is how we can do a little bit of basic customization to our UI. So let's say you wanted more space on your timeline. You can do so by simply just clicking on one of the lines and then dragging up. And the same applies for all of your panels. You can do the same for the properties. You can do the same for your scene outliner and also your toolbar as well. So just have a little play around with that. Give yourself the space that you need so that you can work with what you need to work with. For example, with a scene outliner, let's say you've got a lot of items in your scene. You might want to have a bigger scene outliner so you can easily make your selections between those. And like I said, it's just a matter of moving these little lines here. And typically they're gonna have these little corner pieces near them. So moving on from here, the last thing that I also wanted to show you was the different user interface layouts. What I mean by this is, so currently we are working with the default user interface layout and it's got all of the components that I've just mentioned to you. Now what you can do is switch to the different layout modes. And these layout modes are essentially just optimized for doing specific tasks. So let's say you are trying to work with a little bit of UV editing. Click this little button here, select UV editing, and then it's gonna give you an interface which is gonna work best with your UV wrapping. So you're gonna have your UVs on the left and then your item on the right. If it was to go into the animation mode, what you'll find is you have your timeline and a few other extra bits on the left hand side here to work with that animation. It's just essentially rearranging the UI components to give you the best layout that you can have to make it efficient. And if you ever need to go back to default, just select the button and just press default. And don't forget, you can also see which layout mode you're working with using this little indicator at the top here. So hopefully you guys are a little bit more familiar with Blender and the user interface and are looking forward to creating some awesome 3D models in the next few videos. Once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Vertus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.